Before we start, I would like to make it perfectly clear that this is not, I repeat, not a ponage video. Yes, folks, it seems that we needs must do this one final time. As some of you may already be aware, a while back, Bionic Dance and I had a minor falling out in the comments section of one of her videos that resulted in her blocking me for essentially being obstinate and not taking her schooling appropriately. This sorry situation was, thankfully, resolved speedily thanks to a peace brokered between us by Shayra, a valued mutual friend. Since then, we've been cordial to each other in comments and elsewhere online. And, most recently, she has even been kind enough to advise me during the setup of my own Zazzle store. So no, as I said at the start of this video, this is not a ponage. It is, however, an honest attempt by me to put to rest once and for all the supposed dichotomy she poses between atheism and theism. As she puts it, you're either a theist or you're an atheist. That's it. It is a binary set. Or, at the very least, have people thinking about the concepts involved without having to take it on faith from anybody. What? Yeah, 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 I'm about to tell them why. Well, despite my efforts to break the dichotomy by providing clear examples of ideologies that do not fall into this nice bipolar split in a video, I've also had discussion after discussion using the same clear examples in her comment sections when the issue pops out at me from my subscription box. A case in point, for practically the last week, I've had the Anubis Drake banging on at me about this issue after I simply asked Bionic Dance about two specific examples that didn't quite fit. Thankfully, my friend Agent of Doubt came across another dictionary-defined ideology, Ichthyism, uh, which explicitly excludes both theism and atheism from its taken position. In simple terms, it is neither nor, which is a valid premise used in law, mathematics, software programming, and even logic itself. So let's have a look into ichthyism. Okay, here we are, starting with Wikipedia, who is your friend and a good place to start on most web searches. Ignosticism or ichthyism is the theological position that every other theological position, including agnosticism, assumes too much about the concept of God and many other theological concepts. The word was coined by Sherwin Wine, who was a rabbi and a founding figure of humanistic Judaism. It can be defined as encompassing two related views about the existence of God. Firstly, the view that a coherent definition of God must be presented before the question of the existence of God can be meaningfully discussed. Furthermore, if that definition is unfalsifiable, the agnostic takes the, pos takes the theological non-cognitivist position that the question of the existence of God, per that definition, is meaningless. In this case, the concept of God is not considered meaningless. The term God is considered meaningless. So there's a bit of ambivalence going on there within that definition. Uh, the second view is synonymous with, the, with theological non-cognitivism and skips the, skips the step of first asking what is meant by God 
before proclaiming the original question, God does, does God exist, as meaningless. Some philosophers have seen agnosticism as a variation of agnosticism or atheism, whilst others have considered it to be distinct. An agnostic maintains that they cannot say, they cannot even say whether he or she is a theist or an atheist until such until sufficient definition of theism is put forth. Okay, let's check that against. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, so we've got free dictionary, uh, which is pretty much word for word um, what Wikipedia is saying. So I would imagine one of them, I don't know which, has copy pasted from the other one. Okay, um, let's look at theological non cognitivism. Uh, sorry, non cog. Yes, non cognitivism. Theolog theological non cognitivism is the argument that religious language, and specifically words like gods, are not cognitively meaningful. It is sometimes considered to be synonymous with agnosticism. Overview Theological non cognitivism can be argued in different ways depending on one's theory of meaning. Michael Martin, writing from a verificationist perspective, concludes that religious language is meaningless because it is not verifiable. George H. Smith uses an attribute-based approach in an attempt to prove that there is no concept for the term God. He argues that there are no meaningful attributes, only negatively defined or relational attributes, making the term meaningless. Another way of expressing theological non-cognitivism is, for any sentence S, S is cognitively meaningless if and only if S expresses an unthinkable position, or S does not express a proposition. The sentence X is a four-sided triangle that exists outside of space and time, cannot be seen or measured, and it actively hates blue spheres, is an example of an unthinkable proposition. Although the sentence expresses an idea, that idea is incoherent and so cannot be entertained in thought. It is unthinkable and unverifiable. Similarly, why is what it is does not express a meaningful proposition except in, the, in a familiar conversational context. In this sense, to claim to believe in X or Y is a meaningless assertion in the same way as I believe that colourless green ideas sleep furiously is grammatically correct but without meaning. Some theological non-cognitivists assert that to be a strong atheist is to give credence to the concept of God because it assumes that there actually is something understandable to not believe in. This can be confusing because of the widespread belief in God and the common use of the series of letters G-O-D as if it is already understood that it has some cognitively understandable meaning. From this view, strong atheists have made the mistaken assumption that the concept of God actually contains an expressible or thinkable proposition. However, this depends on the specific definition of God being used. As with agnosticism, the consistent theological non-cognitivist awaits a coherent definition of the word God, or of any other metaphysical utterance purported to be discussable, before being able to engage in arguments for or against God's existence. So, um, let's see what Yahoo says. Okay, is ichthyism inclusive of atheism in any way? If you understand the question, I'd like to hear a response from you, regardless of your religious preference. I myself believe it to be completely inclusive of atheist beliefs, but contradicting them as doing so. Now, the best answer to that question, as chosen by the asker, is Ichtheism is not a term that embraces atheism. Atheism is a belief that there is no God. A plus theism equals no God. To assert that, you would need to have some concept of the thing 
it is the existence of which you are denying. The term igtheism is ig plus theism. Ig, i.e. Uh, ignorance of what the term God means. Even a denial that it means anything at all. So an igtheist ig is not denying that God exists. They are denying that the term God actually refers to anything meaningful at all. In that case, it would be necessary. It would necessarily be quite impossible to know, to deny that it exists, just as it would be impossible to assert that it does. A possible response to the igtheist position would be to explain what the term God does mean. Since so far nobody seems to have been able to do that, except in the vaguest and mo most vacuous terms, e.g. a something up there, or the uncaused cause of it all, ichtheism would seem to be a reasonable stance, but it is very different from atheism. <coughs> and as you might expect, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about igtheism. That's what's out there. That's what's easy to find. I found it. So can anybody. I suggest it's out there. Google is your friend. Um, don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Now, just for giggles, and while we're here, let's also have a look at as many definitions of atheist that I can find online to explore the not-a-theist option. Okay, well, let's start with uh, my favourite um, online dictionary, because it's... Uh, in my search bar. Chambers. Chambers says atheism, noun. Uh, the belief that there is no God. Let's look up atheist. It redirects us to atheism. Okay, so let's have a look at another one. Macmillan. Someone who believes that God does not exist. Cambridge. Atheist. Noun. Someone who believes that God or gods do not exist. Merriam-Webster. One who believes that there is no deity. Oxford. A person who does not believe in the existence of God or gods. Your Dictionary. An atheist is a person who does not believe in the existence of any kind of God or higher power. Uh, atheist. Definition. One who believes there is no God or gods. That's wordsmith. Free dictionary. One who disbelieves or denies the existence of God or gods. So there you have the flexibility for an active or a passive non-belief. I guess. Well, yeah, you don't believe it or actively deny it. Okay, so... Info, please. A person who denies or disbelieves the existence of a supreme being or beings. Yahoo Education, one who disbelieves or denies the existence of God or gods. Okay, Webster's. This is from, um, yeah, this is from um, WebsterDictionary.org. So this is pulling a few out. Um, one who disbelieves or denies the existence of a god or supreme intelligent being. A godless person. WordNet Dictionary, someone who denies the existence of God. Related to or characterised by or given to atheism. So, again, someone who actively denies or is given towards, not, you know, yeah, disbelieving, I guess. Legal, 
one who denies the existence of God. Secondary, as atheists do not have any religion that can bind their consciences to speak the truth, they are excluded from being witnesses. So there we go. We have not just been exploring atheist, we've also learnt something about being an atheist. According to Webster, at least. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dictionary.com, your best friend. Um, a person who denies or disbelieves the existence of a supreme being or beings. The origin, first use, 1565 or 75, which kind of makes sense given that people were being burnt for heresy as late as the Tudors. Um, anyway, uh, from the Greek, atheos, godless, ist. Okay, um, vocabulary.com. The root theist means belief in a god. The prefixes mono, poly, and a mean one, many, and no, respectively. So a monotheist is someone who believes in a single god, a polytheist is someone who believes in many gods, and an atheist is someone who believes there is no god at all. Okay, uh, let's see what jolly old Wikipedia has to say. Oh, sorry, it's gone off the screen slightly. Uh, in a broad sense, is the rejection of a belief in the existence of deities, in a narrower sense, it's specifically the position that there are no deities. Most inclusively, atheism is simply the absence of belief that any deities exist. Atheism is contrasted with theism, which in its most general form is the belief that only that at least one deity exists. The term atheism originated from the Greek atheos, meaning without God, which was applied with a negative connotation to those thought to reject the gods worshipped by the larger society. With the spread of three thoughts, sceptical inquiry and subsequent increases increase in criticism of religion, application of the term narrowed in scope. The first to identify themselves as atheists appeared in the 18th century. Uh, it was kind of later than uh, what the previous dictionary claimed, but yeah, it was around that time. It was a few hundred years ago rather than a couple of thousand. Um, atheists tend to be sceptical of supernatural claims, citing a lack of empirical evidence. Atheists have offered various rationales for not believing in any deity. These include the problem of evil, the argument from inconsistent revelations, and the argument from non-belief. Other arguments for atheism range from the philosophical to the social to the historical. Although some atheists have adopted secular philosophies, there is no one ideology or set of behaviours to which all atheists adhere. Okay, this was interesting. Uh, let's look a little bit further into the history of it. Um, specifically, applied with negative connotations thought to those who reject the gods worshipped by the larger society. And to that, we will turn to the Cambridge Companion to Atheism. For there is a lovely bit in here. Away with these atheists, go get Polycarp the old bishop of the Christians. When Polycarp was caught and interrogated, the latter tried to save him and told him to recant, say, away with the atheists. Polycarp looked at the crowd, shook his fist, and then said, away with the atheists. He was not the only martyr confronted with the charge. So we have early Christians being accused of atheism because they rejected the gods of their peers. Um, further down, it said we've got here um, Justinian. Justinius admitted that the Christians were indeed atheists regarding their attitude towards the pagan gods. It is indeed hard to see how the pagans could have thought differently, given that the Christians had no temples, 
or statues of deities and did not perform sacrifices. In the eyes of the pagan philosopher Celsius, Celsus, circa 180, quoted by Origen, uh, 184 to 254, so that is a couple of thousand years back, nearly, uh, in his Contra Celsium, uh, written circa second uh, third century um, this made the Christians comparable to other uncivilized people who had no gods either such as the barbaric Scythians or nomadic Libyans the charge had a long life and survived even into the fourth century uh, it's hardly surprising that the Jews suffered from the same accusation even though they had a temple Yet their separate position made them vulnerable too, and Julian the Apostate even stated that the Christians had inherited their atheism from the Jews. So, there we go, a little look into the history of atheism and the definitions that I can find online. Hmm. So, in conclusion... I honestly have to ask you, Kate, are you simply an atheist clinging to the false dichotomy you proffer using a definition I cannot find online in an hour or so of research? Or are you an anti-theist attempting to draw battle lines in this war you proclaim exists between theists and atheists? If it is valid for you to force your definition of a theist onto those who reject it on the basis of a theosist, then would it also be valid and fair to place an unwanted label upon you based on your actions? Finally, Given previous concessions on the dichotomy, privately, in the case of ambivalence during deconversion, and the evidence I have offered time and again on, of other positions that clearly break this binary set, would you consider it dogmatic to continue putting forward this fallacy? As I said at the start, this is not a pornage video. It is a sincere request for Kate to consider that, on this occasion, some revision may need to be made. As well as being a reminder to all of you out there on YouTube, in the words of someone I still value highly on these channels, please, don't run on automatic. Think. Whatever you do, wherever you do it, and whoever you're doing it with, please, have a good one.